Welcome to the Uganda Catholic Television. I'm Sunday Gloria Abwatch with UCTV News. Harambe Initiative Uganda has launched a petition to the Electoral Commission for a referendum in order to reduce the 520 members of parliament to 191. According to the chairperson of this movement, Nasa Kakumba, this comes in a spirit of saving the country over 12 billion Uganda shillings spent on 338 extra legislators in the name of salaries, which is is a financial burden. The petition launched today is expected to run for a period of 40 to 60 days, aiming at collecting signatures from Ugandans in an effort to get rid of 338 parliamentary seats. So as the country saves 144 billion Uganda shillings, which is spent every year on these legislators' salaries. Reducing the number of members of parliament to 191 will on a monthly basis save the Ugandan taxpayer over 12 billion shillings. Over 12 billion shillings. Saving 12 billion shillings on a monthly basis is roughly, 500, is roughly 5 kilometers of the Tamak Road every month. While launching the petition, Nasa Kakumba, the chairperson of the Arambe Initiative Uganda, proposed that some categories like the workers, youth, army, elderly, and the disabled do not necessarily need to be represented in parliament since they have their respective ministries in which they belong. Our petition seeks to have the army, the youth, the disabled, the workers, the elderly, not represented in parliament. And the reason is because these, this group has functional ministries and authorities where their voices can best be heard. There is also no data, and we believe there will never be data, that suggests that having members of parliament representing the army, the youth, the disabled, the workers, the elderly, uplifted the welfare of these groups. Kakumba argues that the exercise is not in any way politically motivated, despite having invited all political parties to not only endorse the cause, but also participate in the interest of the country's health economy. This cause is non-partisan, and we have before and even after here written to all functional political parties, and I'm saying functional political parties, to ask them to be part of the cons this constitutional move. I believe no political party will... will will not want to be part of this because at the end of the day, we want to reduce the expenditure of the taxpayer. And when that happens, we'll have a better country. Having been convinced that the legislators cannot reduce their numbers themselves, Harambe's legal advisor, Hassan Kalule, proved the legitimacy of this cause by referring to the referendum and other provisions act of 2005. The constitution gives us a right that through a referendum, we can come up as Ugandans and we raise our voice, and we, we, we take our vote, and determine the affairs in which we would wish our country to be governed. It's upon this very background that I refer you to the law, the Referendum and Other Provisions Act, that is 2005, where we are given a right as you, you Ugandans who find it convenient to lead the cause, the way we are doing now as the Harambe Initiative Uganda, to move forward and mobilize our fellow Ugandans and find a remedy for the challenge we are facing today. This is a common challenge. The current 11th parliament has 529 elected MPs and 27 ex-official members, making it the largest parliament in East Africa after growing from 445 lawmakers in the 10th parliament. Hineni. A South Korean company registered in Uganda has disclosed its intention to establish a plant that will manufacture automotive components, among which will be electric batteries to complement Kira Motors Corporation. The development comes at, uh, after Kira Motors Corporation unveiled the 2024 bus product line, which include the Kayola bus and coaches that have been specifically designed for Africa. During their visit to State House in Tebe, Hineni's directors, led by Kwon Hakol, promised to keep the profit and reinvest it here in Uganda. More technology and in the So, 
possible and what, what we need. We have Cho and Jango who also. And finally, from our local scene, the permanent secretary to the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Ramadan Gobi, has acknowledged the importance of green financing and prioritizing resilience in preparation for environmental shocks and guaranteeing sustainable development. He disclosed this while presiding over the closure of a two days regional convention of finance ministers for climate action that has been ongoing wing at Serena Hotel here in Kampala. On the 16th of this month, about 20 ministers of finance from African countries, several high-profile delegates and institutional partners convened in Kampala for today's convention under their popular umbrella known as the Coalition for Climate Action. The event was intended to better the understanding of the role of African ministries of finance in enhancing the adaptive capacity as well as boosting climate resilience of African countries, according to Gobi. By prioritizing resilience and facilitation of green financing, the continent is able to protect its country's economies from environmental shocks and also unlock opportunities for sustainable development. By prioritizing resilience and facilitation of green financing, we, only, we not only yield and also ensure that we can protect our economies from climate shocks, but also we, we unlock opportunities for sustainable development. He added that the event has reaffirmed the necessity of mainstreaming climate change considerations into the fiscal policy frameworks and national budgets, recognizing the integral role of shaping a prosperous and environmentally sustainable future. Over the past two days, the fact that climate change is an economic development problem has been reaffirmed. The necessity of mainstreaming climate considerations into our fiscal policy frameworks as well as national budgets, recognizing that our role as finance ministries is integral to shaping a prosperous and environmentally sustainable future, I think has been uh, also reaffirmed. From Netherlands, Awefe Fleming says that regular engagements of this kind, which are still grappling with a similar question of how to create fiscal economic policies, to respond to the global call by sharing knowledge and experience for the common interest. Many, con many finance ministries are grappling with similar questions in terms of how to include climate risk in their budget, how to uh, create fiscal economic policies to respond properly, and there's a lot of benefit in learning from each other. So um, I think we look forward to organizing a similar convening again and making sure that on these topics that concern uh, finance ministries across Africa, but also across the world, that we stay in regular communication, we learn from each other, we exchange our, our experiences, and if con one country is leading in one area, there's other countries can learn from that. and. Um, um, so, yeah, we look forward to keeping the exchange going. According to Pekka Morin from the Finnish Finance Ministry, they have resolved to form partnerships to work together on climate change action and they pledged a regular meeting as a regional coalition to share experiences on good practices and lessons learned, the opportunities and risks that come along with climate change and how they affect the economy. African countries where climate impacts and risks are, are high, and that's why it also has economic impacts that are harmful for the economy. But there are ways to, to, to manage them. And I think Africa, we learned here that African countries are doing a very good job in managing them, try to build up resilience and, and anticipate the policy needs uh, beforehand. It's all about planning uh, uh, and uh, trying to build up long-term st strategies on, on how to address these problems together. The Coalition of Finance Ministers for Climate Action was established six years ago.
to bring together physical and economic policymakers from over 90 countries in leading the global climate response and in securing a just transition towards a low carbon resilient development. It is time now for today in history. Thank you very much for watching UCTV News. Now we are going to take a very short break and when we return, don't forget we'll be having the Rome Reports. UCTV, good news for all. Children, friends of Jesus, you are welcome to your program. I'm Dorothy Atire Songo. Be with us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord For church leaders, we pray for their well being. May the Almighty God guide and lead them through their missions. We pray to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are watching UCTV, good news for all. For this and more, tune in to Kasese Get Radio 100.5 in Western Region, located at the hill of the Diocese of Kasese. KGR brings you all Catholic programs and an advertising platform in all our radio shows like Good Morning Renzori, Chama Tovoka, Ukute, The Business Show, Propeller, The Request Show and Sports, Evaluation, Bahinga Bakuluka, Late Night Show and many others. Our other services include Isuzu Tipa, a no car, public address system, live band, Omoke Kera, an audio recording studio, and outside live broadcast. For more information, call 0773-597-166 or visit our website www.kasesegetradio.com. Kasesiget Radio, Omusondoria, the voice of truth. UCTV, good news for all. And with the Rome Reports segment closes our Thursday edition of UCTV News. I'm Sunday Gloria Aboch. Good evening and good night.